So, um, so I'm Esther Collier. I'm a retired teacher. I have to say that now, not a teacher. And uh, I've been in the science field for a long time. I was really loved listening to everything that was said. And, and I feel like I could just ignore my presentation, and just go talk about all the things you said, and it would be <laughs> wonderful. Uh, um, I want to say like at, at the start with Kathy is that I have a son as well who's um, struggling emotionally on the other side of the spectrum, being in the uh, eco field. And we need to find ways to deal with these, um, how our kids are feeling, and we need to make sure that the solutions we create are solutions that, that heal the, the people in the, um, in the process. So Target Climate came out of a lot of thinking, a lot of science background, uh, a lot of evidence um, searching, so it is, it's meant to be um, something that is, is going to help solve the climate crisis. And so I want to just mention really quickly the logo because it refers to something somebody said. I can't remember now. It's all kind of blurring. But about working with the air, the soil, and the water because the white is the air and the brown is the soil and the blue is the water. And I think that it's a really this wonderful understanding. I think it was Peter about this sort of oneness and how we're connected. And when we work with those things, we're going to increase the life, which is the green, um, by decreasing the heat, which is the red. So that's the concept of the Target Climate logo. And, and what I want to talk about is um, trying to find the way forward and that we can do this without uh, the money and the the hopeless burden of so many things and the looking at sort of what the evidence is coming at. So I, I'm, even though I understand that money is going to be needed, I want to help you see this vision that we have that um, to get the money, we're going to need um, policy change and value change. So Anne-Marie, just so wonderful. So that value change and that policy change. And so I'm going to be talking about how we can um, to get that change by getting people to understand so that Nahid was talking about the education pieces and the need to to and somebody else to um, just that need to to really understand and work um, to so that the public is part of the process so we're all part of the process so uh, I'm now I need to figure out how to get this click okay so my son was telling me when he was taking environmental science he said he studied climate communication. He said, you really have to keep it really simple. Global warming is real. The prognosis is very bad. Scientists agree on the predictions, but there's hope. And so I'm going to just use those as sort of the headings as we go through that. Um, there, I'm not going to talk a lot about what global warming is, but I want you to understand that what it's really important that we recognize that it be evidence-based. So the things I'm going to talk about here are based on the evidence. Uh, we can't design solutions forward unless we're really looking at the pieces and putting them together. And the businesses have been at this from the beginning. So I really appreciate people talking about the role that businesses are playing in this. Um, so they've been, there are businesses who've been looking at the evidence from way, way back and already beginning to put into place processes, to, as uh, Nelson was saying, to, to look forward and look into the future so that there will be jobs for our kids um, in the future on the climate. So these, these three things are just that um, we, these are the three ways we can stop global warming. We can keep the light as light. And the funny thing about that is that the, this, I just heard recently, there are places where they're painting the tops of buildings white and they're painting the streets white because when the surfaces are white, they reflect light back as light and light is strong enough to leave the planet not turn into heat. So the, it's just the solutions are being put into place. We, we often don't think about that. We hear so much about the how to stop putting greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. And that is something that I, I think is the biggest thing we as individuals can do. Um, but also we can, there are technologies being invented. They're looking in Oman, actually, there's rocks near the surface in Oman that can absorb carbon dioxide. So that's how to take the greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere. So these are just three, three things. It's not just that one that we always hear about. Um, I, I actually like looking at the IPCC reports and I, I want to do just really quickly see if I can help you not be afraid to look at them as well. So we are on the sixth assessment report. It just came out and um, I'm gonna see, I think this will work this way where 
if I just move this around. <laughs> so tricky. Um, the sixth assessment report is, is uh, the latest IPCC report, and they have three working groups. So the working groups, um, this, this sixth report, and I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom, there's some wonderful little short video clips that explain things on here, and they're really interesting to look at. So um, the link is in the slideshow. Maybe, Marge, I can just share the slideshow at the end. Um, these, these then, this report is coming out next year, the full report, a synthesis of it will be in 2022. So this is analyzing all of the scientists that are putting together their minds to work on these things. And there are three working groups, so there's going to be three reports. And the three reports are, um, one's going to be on, I'm really interested in this one coming out in March, how do we mitigate climate change? Because that's the whole goal of target climate is to try to end climate change. What's the process forward? And, um, and then, uh, the, then there's one in February, the impacts, adaptation, and vulnerability. And then this is the one that just came out last August, the physical science basis. So there, this one we can actually see. So I was looking at it. And when you, when you go to the report, don't try to read the whole thing. It's just overwhelming. But there's a summary for policymakers, which if you want, you can look at. And I'm going to go over that a little bit. And then there are, um, I, I don't find the headline statements very useful, but you can also access the um, press report, press release. It's quite simple to look at. I think I have the press release up here somewhere. I think it's, is it this one? No, that's the summary for policymakers. This is the press release here. So it's just text. It's what they would have told the press. So anyway, if you're interested, go and look at these things and see, see what they read it yourself. So um, in the summary for policy make, makers in this working group one, this is what the latest things that came out that were are concerning because we say the earth and I also have always felt the earth is billions of years old. So when we look in our time frame, they're saying um, the changes that we're making now are irreversible over hundreds to thousands of years. And actually, I should say to millennia, millennia. they're even talking about something's millennia. But it's not like it's not going to be able to heal, but it's long term, the, some of the effects we're doing. Um, and they're looking at what those ones are. And then they're also saying that if we want to, if we're trying to keep to this goal of 1.5 degrees Celsius above um, the pre-industrial levels, and they're saying that it's the, the chance of getting to not doing that or beyond reach or getting close to being beyond reach. We would have to have immediate rapid and large scale reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. This is, this is where Diane Sachs, when she says, she says, it really is worse than we think. It's, it's, it's going to be really, really big and really, really affecting our, our kids. And uh, they're explaining, trying to help us understand that it's not just about temperature. So as a science person, I am hearing this all the time in my ear and I'm with you, Donna. It's really hard when you take time to look at it to not want to just give up hope. And but I wanna show you where the hope comes in and where the pieces are because there is still this opportunity to do these large scale reductions. Um, and so the best estimate, if we continue at the sort of level we're at, and I know that money talks and it looks like that's the way it's gonna be, we would, we, they are predicting that we will reach three degrees by 2100 above um, pre-industrial levels. And they're saying that anything over 1.5 is risky, over two is extremely serious. So we're, we're looking at three degrees by, the, by 2100. That's, that's definitely in, in uh, kids born today that there's a good chance they will be here for that time. Um, so this just what came out very recently, this woman understanding she resigned from her tenured position and um, she, she had this fact that I didn't have, but I was really interested in finding. She knows that we're supposed to be reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 45% by 2030. And she says at present countries have pledged, not done it, but pledged to reduce emissions by 0.5%. Um, this is when, when I say that we're falling really short because they're not even keeping to their pledges. So this is only their pledge. So this is where, why that sort of feeling of hopelessness is really affecting some of our youth. But these are my favorite parts of the IPCC reports. I go down to the bottom in the D section because they start talking about what we should do. And so many people today talked about education. 
that is evidence-based. This is what the scientists are saying we need to do to make the change. We need to educate and inform and look at the word community in there. Look at the indigenous knowledge in there. Look at the local knowledge. I mean, look at all the wisdom that Anne-Marie had. I think it's Anne-Marie. I'm just hoping I'm getting, you know, um, and um, no, what's, sorry. I know I've got it. Don't, anyway, the wisdom that we have, it wasn't Anne-Marie who spoke before Anne-Marie. She had really good ideas. If we had that local knowledge and could share that with each other, this is the way forward. This is what the scientists are telling us is the way forward. We always hear about, I am not saying these aren't important. Of course, they're crucial, electric vehicles, building. But what they're really saying is we're not going to get there by just telling electric um, building because the real problem is that the average person is unaware and doesn't know what to do. So the real problem is we need the education, the information, the community engagement in the process. We have to get everybody involved because that's how we're going to make the change. So public acceptability can enable and or inhibit the implementation of policies. We have to get the public on board. The big issue is getting the public engaged in the process. We have to get civil society, private sector engaged in the process. That's the target climate plan, is to get people engaged in the process. I was listening to the BBC Reflector. So Mark Carney, economist, very involved in the money, looking at that, recognizing that climate crisis is going to affect the economy and cares of, is now in charge of a climate and a, a huge climate conglomerate as well. Instead, he's, he's retired from the um, Bank of England. And he's, um, but he was quoting no, this economist, Nobel economist, Eleanor Ostrom. And she, she said how a community can cooperate to manage a scarce resource. So it's about bringing companies, communities together to manage our global ecosystem. So I, this society setting the goal, society's values being redefined, I want you to see those things because I'm going to come back and refer to them later. If society sets a clear goal, it will become profitable to be part of the solution. We will redefine society's values. The views that were on the fringe become mainstream. And Carney talks about this tipping point. So right now it seems really hopeless, but even just in the last two years, you've really seen, and, and every, a lot of people spoke about this today, you've seen people um, say it's different now. People are starting to put environment more important. It's becoming mainstream. All the businesses are looking at becoming green. We have paper straws suddenly everywhere. Um, so it's, this tipping point is being reached where suddenly everyone's going to be saying, no, this is where we need to go. And that's what, what the legal scholars were talking about, these social movements that once seemed improbable can unexpectedly gain traction. So the target climate plan, which, which I, in looking at all of these pieces, is about bringing communities together so that we can reach consensus. One of those things that they said was necessary. So target climate arranges events so that the community, a local community is brought into the same space at the same time. We're gonna plan actions. That's the setting clear goals that they were talking about. So we're going to plan actions that are local for our community using, and, and we're gonna normalize behavior, which is redefining society's values. So as we gather together and talk about it, it will become normal to do the target climate things. One of the parts of target climate is to ask people to put that logo up in their windows, in their cars, on their letterhead, on their businesses, because this then becomes normal. People say, oh, everyone else is doing this. I'm not the only one. And we feel so much safer doing things when we see that everyone else is doing it as well. So now we're getting everybody's income, everybody's physical energy solving the problem instead of just our physical energy solving the problem. And when we normalize behavior, those people are going to vote differently. They're going to talk to their counselors differently. 
they're going to make policy changes happen because they're going to be calling for a different kind of behavior because their values are different. And that's when we will get the money that we need to make the changes that the world needs. But we will begin doing it together, not alone. Um, also, in these events, we are sharing our local information and resources and skills. Make it, we'll, we will begin to make it profitable to be part of the solution because we will help each other. So um, I, I really have to go and find the name of who, who this was because what, as after Nelson, I was taking notes. But of course, I can't get Mary Jane, Mary Jane. Mary Jane, you're talking about putting trees in front of your, it's such a great solution. I've been telling people about this so many times. If you put trees in, um, if you plant deciduous trees on the south, you're using solar energy in the winter to warm your house. But in the summer, when it's, you don't want to be warm, you have leaves there to keep it cool. I just love that you were talking about, and we planting trees on the north stops those north winds from coming in. Uh, you know, you're the first person I've heard who's talked about it as well. But if we take these local pieces of information and we share them with each other, this is going to help educate. So ideally, I've been fighting to get the leaders of our government to be the ones who explain all this to us. They would be to call us into this action. So every time I get a leader in my space, I'm saying, can you put out a message saying to the people who listen to you, you need to go to a climate event. I'm holding one. The resources will be there. Um, every person in my constituency needs to attend an event to find out what they need to do to make the lifestyle changes we need. I'd like them to do it, but they're not working at the pace that is necessary. And Mark Carney said this again. He said he had felt, oh, good, we're doing it. It's going to be fine. And then he had, this is Greta's words. She, you, this is what he quoted. You've stolen my dreams, my childhood with your empty words, and yet I am one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We're in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? We will not let you get away with this. Right here, right now is where we draw the line. The world's waking up and change is coming, whether you like it or not. And that hit Mark Carney because he said, with the clarity and certainty of youth, she was telling us we're not doing enough. And that's the, that's the hard thing we have to always remember. It's bigger than we think, and we're going to have to find a deeper way forward, but we can, but not by pretending it's not happening. We have to accept that it's happening, and then we have to tackle it with the wisdom and, and these insights that we have. By the way, Greta was on, I was quoted again on this morning, and this is what she, she was quoted as saying this morning, about, as she's saying, like, I've heard all these things, net zero by 2050, build back better, green economy, blah, blah, blah. She says that this is all we hear from our leaders. They sound great, but, but they have not led to action. So, um, so um, what I'm saying is that Target Climate is saying, and actually there are leadership things happening, but let's use our own leadership skills. Let's build up. So let's develop our own climate action plans and change the values one community at a time. Target Climate will be asking that you start by gathering your family and asking them to, to help work with you to make a family climate action plan. And then you're all connected to so many institutions, right? So, I mean, historical society, art societies were connected to the gyms, were connected to faith communities as schools. So take the time to go to the leader of every institution you're involved in and ask, what is this institution's climate plan? What have you gathered? Can you help tell us, each of the people in our community, can you help us understand what we should be doing? doing? This is how we'll spread this out. And, um, and that's why we're, we're going to hold, we're modeling this. Every time Target Climate holds an event, it really works to get a municipal representative there so that we get information from municipal members that tell us what is available in the community. And the other thing Target Climate really tries to do is get youth to be hosts. So um, these are the, uh, I, oh, just last night then I found out, because remember I said like you start with your individual, then you start with your family, and then you go to your institutions. Miles O'Brien is the, the community um, communi environmental communication expert in Richmond Hill. He came to a meeting we were holding last night 
And he's started talking to us about Resilient Richmond Hill, which is uh, Richmond Hill's climate action strategy. And he said, there's a toolkit. And in this toolkit is, um, is this, uh, these ideas of talk to your family. This is what to talk about. Talk to your community. This is what to talk about. So um, when you go to the Richmond Hill site, um, at the Resilient Richmond Hill, they have the Climate Change Conversation Toolkit. I think I opened it. Yeah. And um, in this, it talks about um, just identifying the people in your life, keep the clients of communication open. And it talks about home things. But it's the beautiful thing about this is it's going to give you Richmond Hills data. So you're going to get local data to tell you exactly how to talk to climate chats, how to talk to your family, institutions, other people in Richmond. It was like, it's like, wow, you've created the parallel document that I need for, for my target climate event. So I was thrilled to see that. And uh, anyway, so we're holding, we've got two lunch and learns in, uh, that are going to be held. This is coming, like I'm working through Richmond Hill United Church, so I'm the net zero chair there. And so one's on October 24th, one's on December 12th, and we'll be helping people develop individual climate action plans and family climate action plans. And recognizing that there is stress related to these issues, whether it's economic stress or whether it's some um, em emotional stress about the crisis, there, um, Susan Kagan, did I say her name correctly? No, Kagan? No, <laughs> yes, Kagan. Okay, thank you, Marge. <laughs> okay, Susan Kagan is, um, is willing going to come and help at the November 13 one and it's given me a lot of resources to help with that so um the the email there to inquire because then I can send the zoom link and I'm um, sorry and then there's this is in Willowdale as well because that's where I was working as a teacher so this high school in Willowdale is hosting a target climate event on November uh, probably November 18 we're just getting permission today um or we're finding out today what whether it's how the date will go and uh, they have a Willowdale Gmail that we're working on. So, so we would be happy to help and uh, hope that you can engage with your family, your friends and your own institutions on the climate crisis. Any 